Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you for being with me again today. It seems like Erdogan is not going to uh, bow down from his uh, NATO uh, opposition to the new members, or at least the ones that desire to be new members, which is Finland and Sweden. Um, Turkey and uh, these two countries, Finland and Sweden, had a uh, summit they, uh, about two days ago and nothing came out of it. Uh, it seems like they, the conversations were, the meetings were constructive, but we didn't come with anything, we didn't agree on anything. So, were they constructive? Okay, at least they met. And they tried and they had a chance to, uh, you know, tell one another uh, what, the, what the issue is and come forth with uh, whatever they uh, can discuss and uh, negotiate and solve, maybe. Well, this article, I think, is just uh, uh, puts water over everything and pff, clears it. This article comes from Reuters from May 29, 2022. And this is the title. Erdogan says won't let terrorism supporting countries enter NATO. That's very clear, right? Is not going to let terrorism supporting countries enter NATO. That's it. So in Istanbul, Turkey, uh, per Turkish President Erdogan says talks with Finland and Sweden about their joining NATO were not at the, and I'm quoting, expected level. And Ankara cannot say yes to, and I'm quoting, terrorism supporting countries. State broadcaster TRT Heber, Heber reported on Sunday. So that's done for now. For now, Turkey has objections to Sweden and Finland joining the Western Defense Alliance, holding up a deal that would allow for a historic enlargement following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Erdogan's latest comments indicated his opposition continued. Yeah, and I'm quoting Mr. Erdogan right now. For the last, for the for as long as Erdogan is the head of the Republic of Turkey. We definitely cannot say yes to countries which support terrorism entering NATO. He was cited as telling reporters on his return from a trip to Azerbaijan on Saturday. Two sources previously told Reuters that Wednesday's talks with Finnish and Swedish delegations made little headway, a headway and it was unclear when further discussions would take place. All 30 NATO members must approve plans to enlarge, enlarge NATO. Turkey challenged the bids from Sweden and Finland on the ground that the countries harbor people linked to the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, militant group and others it deems terrorists and because they halted arms exports to Ankara in 2019 to give us weapons. <laughs> uh, and I'm, um, I'm quoting, they are not honest or sincere. We cannot repeat the mistake made in the past regarding countries that embrace and feed such terrorists in NATO, which is, securely organ which is a security organization, he said. Sweden and Finland had said they condemn terrorism and welcome the possibility of coordinating with Ankara. And I'm quoting, Diplomatic efforts are ongoing. We decline to commit further at this moment. Okay, decline, keep declining. Swedish Foreign Minister Ian Linde said in an email comment to Reuters following Erdogan's latest statements. Erdogan also said Turkey wanted to see an end to the war between Russia and Ukraine as soon as possible, but the, that the situation was becoming more negative each day. And I'm, re I'm uh, quoting, on Monday, I will have phone calls with both Russia and Ukraine. We will continue to encourage the parties to operate channels of dialogue and diplomacy, Mr. Erdogan said. So, as I said, Erdogan has nothing to lose. He has only uh, to gain from this uh, NATO membership uh, request from these two countries. His request, uh, he can request whatever he wants. He's going to... Um, he was going to, he's going to be given, he, if he's still in power. But if he's not going to be in power, when, when the, and we might f have someone else who's going to be <clears throat> like, uh, what's his name, Guaido from uh, Venezuela, then yes, uh, then uh, uh, Turkey will bend over, you know, or take its pants off, bend over, and, uh, you know, 
wait for the big club to uh, proceed. So this is the situation when, uh, when you have people who think about your national interest, which I think Erdogan does. He's a very shrewd uh, politician, he's tough, and uh, he defends his country in a way that uh, he knows best. On the other hand, if you had have a weak individual uh, in that position, he would just uh, do what uh, the United States would uh, tell him to do. He's going to come in front of the I don't know, White House, wave, he's going to be carried from one place to another. Mass media will uh, have a job jubilee with him, he's going to kiss his behind for about two days and after two days he's gonna go back into his uh, uh, I don't know, obscurity and stay there until he's asked again or told again to do something else this is how it works so then uh, when you have this guy who's gonna be all like a monkey on the tv oh, yeah thank you very much i'm at the white house for what to sell your country or to uh, you know to allow outside countries uh, maneuver you into uh, supporting certain things that I'm not saying would be beneficial or not. For instance, let's say Turkey. Turkey doesn't have a really, uh, if you take it, no, um, if Finland and Sweden join NATO as countries, it, for, for uh, uh, Turkey is not a good or a bad thing. Let's say it's not a bad thing. It's more as a good thing because let's say an, uh, their uh, organization uh, grows so that's good more power so that would be a positive thing but on the other hand as just uh, Turkey and uh, for the the leaders they have problems with uh, certain uh, terrorist organizations and certain individuals and uh, the arms sales from those countries what kind of what country are you coming into NATO but you um, sanction me and you don't sell me weapons if I make deals with your companies with companies in your country what's that are we friends then i mean it's not really like that you know the, let's say the turkish government wants to buy some helicopters from a company from finland or from sweden let's say <clears throat> or some engines i don't know from saab and they say well <clears throat> no uh, the government of sweden or uh, finland said no, no we impose sanctions on you but we are partners and we are not partners we are more than partners we are allies how is that how is Turkey an ally to uh, these two countries when these countries have, they banned the exports of uh, their companies to uh, the Turk government, to the Turkish people, to, the, to Turkey as a country? You're not an ally. So that's from, from this perspective, I think Erdogan has a big, big, big point. One of them. The other ones with the terrorists, yeah, if we are in an alliance and we are friends, how come you harbor these guys that... You know, they're deemed terrorists. They are named. Their United States has them on the list uh, of being terrorists. Uh, European Union has them on the list. They're terrorists. Well, why don't you take care of them first, and then we're friends. If you don't do that, you're not my friend. I mean, you're you're keeping my my enemies in your country, and we're friends. We're allies. How is that possible? So again, I think Erdogan is doing what he should do, but and remember uh, and. An overthrow was attempted in 2016, and we still uh, don't know who exactly the guys who ordered it and commanded it and uh, maneuvered it were. I mean, there are some rumors and so on, which I'm not going to say here, but obviously, you know what I mean. Um, and then from then, everything went down between these two countries and the uh, sale of F-16s uh, and other things. Well, thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just. See ya.